So, hi friends. Uh, back with another session here. So, in this session, I will be discussing about the topics. So, let us continue with the nail, which we have stopped in the last video. And I will be discussing about the terminologies used in the dermatology. So, let me read the points written here. In the last session, I just want to tell you what I spoke in the last video. I just spoke with the anatomy of nail. Where I spoke, this is plate, this is bed, this is matrix. And this is a proximal nail fold. Right? And now we are going to deal about the diseases related to the nail plate. You can look at this. This is a nail plate. Right? This is nail plate. So now we are dealing with disease related to the nail plate. And first will be a pitting type. So let me read the points written here under the pitting type. So it's written that pitting the abnormal proximal nail matrix. Right? Abnormal proximal nail matrix. And it's also seen that. It's also written that. We have a psoriasis. In the psoriasis, there is a deep random type, right? In the alopecia, right? Alopecia, uh, what is accreta? It is regular, and eczema. It is eczema. It is coarse. So let us understand the points written here. The first thing is, so we have a pitting, right? We got a pitting. Pitting in the nothing but the small depressions, and these small depressions are seen on the nail, right? An abnormal proximal nail matrix. So it's an abnormal proximal part of the nail. So if you look at this, this is nail. Uh, what is that? This is an right. You can look at this. This is nail plate. Now if you observe here at the proximal aspects, you have a pitting over this aspect. Right? This is the thing here, right? So just understand that abnormal pitting at the proximal aspects, and this is seen in. Uh, this type of nature that is a deep random type and this is seen in psoriasis but if you look at the points we have already discussed regarding the nail changes in the alopecia accreta so what happens in the alopecia accreta it's regular that means the pitting is it's a regular systematic right you can also see the depressions of the pitting in the eczema and let us understand how they look so this is this is known as a coarse type of pitting. You can look at this a large pitting present here. So this is a coarse type of pitting. So coarse in the sense a large one. So that's all it's written here under this a pitting. So under the pitting we have to understand that it's an abnormal proximal nail matrix and pitting one. And psoriasis it is seen in psoriasis that would deep random type. So it's seen in alopecia areata where it's a regular type and you have eczema coarse type, right? So that's all you have to understand here. So let's go to the ne next point. The next point written here, we have a line over here, right? So what are these? It's written that, uh, what is that? Bios line, B-E-A-U-S. What are these? These are the transverse grooves, right? These are the transverse grooves across the nail plates. So these are the transverse grooves across the nail plates. They are These are called Bios lines. And it's also written that, uh, the indications they are prior illness, malnutrition, or severe insult to body. So, let us understand them, guys. So, first, let us look at the first thing that is uh, these lines known as BS lines. So, if you look at this, this is this is half the these lines look. So, you can look at this. This is a nail plate and you got a line here. So, this is known as BS line. So, what are these? These are the transverse because they are transverse here. You can, you can look at this. These are groove type. So the transverse, right, transverse groove, right, across the nail plate, and these are the lines, these are known as Bios line. And what is the indication? That means if you find this type of lines, that means there is, uh, what there is history or it indicates there is a severe illness. Prior there was a severe illness and these type of lines can be seen in the malnutrition or if there is a severe insult to the body. So that's all we have to understand regarding these points, regarding these special type of lines. Just understand that these lines are transverse grooves across the nail plate. And these lines indicate that there is a prior illness or there is a severe insult to the body. Right? So these are the important things guys. That's all written in our notes. So let's go to the next points. Next, we have, uh, what is that? This is Hutchinson's sign. 
so what is this this are longitudinal milano what is that is milano nikia and it's also written that a cuticle right cuticle and pnf right proximal nasal fold involvement and maybe a marker of a melanoma right so let us understand them guys so let us look into the structure and how it looks so you can look at this if you observe carefully here the black one right so these are the long this is a longitudinal place so this is a longitudinal right melanonychia why it is melanonychia it is black right so you can look at this present on the nail it is known as melanonychia and remember that this involves the cuticle and what is cuticle you can look at this the transparent white one this is known as cuticle so it is involving the cuticle and it also involves the proximal nasal fold this is a proximal nasal so prox proximal nail fold not nasal nasal is nose proximal nail fold so this is a proximal nail fold so it is involving uh, the cuticle and the proximal nail fold and what is that and what does it resemble it is a marker of melanoma the moment you see this type of hutchinson sign and this type of melanonychia the longitudinal one and this is the marker of melanoma so that's all you have to understand regarding this points the longitudinal and proximal nail the longitudinal melanonychia uh, which include cuticle and proximal nasal fold involvement it may be a marker of melanoma so that's all we have to understand guys regarding these points so let's go with the next points so we have something known as oil drop right oil drop sign or oil spot sign or salmon patch and it's also written that seen in psoriasis so let us see first how this oil drop or oil spot sign or salmon patch looks so you can look at this uh, this is nail if you observe carefully here the pink one this is a salmon patch or oil drop or oil spot right so this is here you can see this it's an it's not this this one right so if you observe here this is the spot the yellow one. so this is oil drop or oil spot on salmon patch and we should also understand that it's an yellow patch right typically seen in psoriasis and why do you find this salmon patch and why there is oil drop or oil spot sign or why there is salmon patch because there is oncolysis that means a breakdown of nail uh, between the nasal between the nail plate and the nail bed we know that nail bed is nothing but just below the nail plate so between the nail plate and the nail bed there is oncolysis so that's the reason you can find there is salmon patch so that's all we have to understand and i told you before regarding this hutchinson sign that is this melanonychia it is a marker of a melanoma right so what is melanoma melanoma is a tumor of melanin forming cells especially a malignant tumors associated with skin cancers so that's all we have to understand regarding this points guys just understand melanomas these are tumors of melanin of forming cells right the tumors of melanin forming cells so that's all you have to understand here so let's go with the next points the next point written here uh, what are these these are mis lines m e e s lines so let us understand them let me read the points written here so it's written that these are a transverse white lines right these are transverse white lines and it's also written that it is seen it's seen in arsenic toxicity so let us understand them guys so what do you mean by mis lines so you can look at this these are the lines if you observe carefully here these are the lines you got a transverse white lines so you can see 1 2 3 4 you can look at this 1 2 3 1 2 3 right you can see 1 2 3 4 so these are the mis lines so these are the transverse white lines and what do they represent these are these are the marker of arsenic toxicity right so these are the marker of arsenic toxicity that means if you see you have these type of lines these are mis lines so these are transverse white lines these are that tells you that it's an arsenic toxicity so that's all we have to understand regarding these points guys so let us understand the next points the next thing is we have uh, something known as teres nail so what is this so let us understand let us look at the structures how they look. 
so it's written that regarding this T E R R Y S, it is seen in cirrhosis, right? And you can also understand there is some melanin type pigment. It is seen in cirrhosis. But now let us look into that half it looks right so for that you have to look into the structure let me find out the picture yes 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 i got it now so you can look at this this is a picture and if you observe carefully here we have a nail here and we can see the black one the melanin so these are or teres lines so teres t e r r y teres nail so that's all you have to understand regarding this remember that t at the top melanin at the top next we have half nail or half half nail sign so what do you mean by half half nail sign so it is not the melanin covers till the half year so if you look at the picture here uh yes so i think this is half half nail i don't know fine so thing around fine just remember that uh, now this time we have something known as half of nail so what does it mean it means now the melanin you can look at this it is still here the melanin deposits are seen laugh so where do you observe this it can be seen in renal failure and can be seen in cirrhosis also so that's all we have to understand regarding spines guys so let's go with the next one the next points written here that is we have what is that it is mur murkis nail what are those these are paid lines seen in hypo albuminemia so that we have to understand if you look at the nail here in this uh, suppose patient has hypo albuminemia since since such conditions these patients have gotten paid lines here right so these are the banded paid lines these are known as what are these mirror case lines right that's all you have to understand guys so that's all regarding the nails just understand that what do you mean that mirror lines these are transverse white lines seen in arsenic toxicity so you have a teres line it's a melanin deposit half of line melanin and we have mirror mirror what is this mirror case nail and these are the banded pairs of lines it is seen in hypo albuni albuminemia so that's all we have to understand guys so now it's time to understand regarding the language we use in dermatology right so what are the languages we use in dermatology so let's go with the first thing the first thing written here we have a macule change in color second one we have patch that is a large macule right and another thing we have something as papule right so what's papule it's an raised solid one and it's also written that we have a plague right we got a plague and what are those it's a raised solid more than 0.5 so let us understand them guys so let's go with the first thing that is macule so what do you mean by macule macule it's nothing but it's a change in color if you look at this picture here this is a skin a part of the skin which shows a change in the color you can look at this there is a change in the color so macule is nothing but change in color is known as macule and if you look at the next point we have a patch so what is a patch a large macule so you can look at this it's a change in color right so now this is a large large right so how large it is more than 2 cm if it is more than 2 cm if you find more than 2 cm change in color and this is known as patch so macule is a change in color but this is a bit small it's less but in the patch 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 is nothing but it's a large macule and how large more than 2 cm so let us understand the next thing uh, we use commonly in the dermatology and that will be papule so let us understand papule it's not papule it's papule so let us understand the points it's written that a raised solid less than or equal to 0.5 cm so what is it trying to tell us if you look at this this is a papule so it's a raised one it's a raised it's a solid and it is less than or equal to 0.5 cm so that's all we have to understand here 
regarding the macule regarding the patch and regarding the papule so let's go with the second one the last one not the last one so the fourth one that is a papule sorry plague so let me read the points written here it's written that it's a raised solid and more than 0.5 cm and it's written that this is a plat uh, what is that platypus line height less than width so if you observe here this is half the plague looks so you can look at this this is a skin this is a plague this is raised this is solid and these are more than 0.5 cm and the height is less than the width if you look at this is an height right height is less than the width so that's all we have to understand regarding this so just understand this is how it looks so whenever we speak about the pap papillae it means yes it's a raised just you have to think of raised solid and less than 0.5 then plague and you have to think it is solid and now it is more than 0.5 cm let us understand the next thing uh the next point is nodules so and it's written that it's a solid round hemispherical right it is solid round and it is hemispherical that is more than 0.5 cm and it has got a deep palpable component best palpable than seen example lipoma so let us understand let us look at the first thing this is half the nodule looks right this is how the nodule looks right if you want to look a better one so we have this right this is how the nodule looks right if you observe here let me read the points written here it's written that the solid round or hemispherical it is of more than 0.5 cm and remember that we can palpate right deep palpable com component it's a deep palpable component and remember that these are better palpated than seen so we can palpate it better than than we see example under the nodules that is lipoma if you look at the lipoma they are best palpated than seen so that's all we have to understand regarding this nodules guys that's all we have to understand regarding the solids regarding the round all those So let's go with the next points written here. The next thing written is, ah, uh, what are those? We have a vesicle, right? We got a vesicle here. So what is it trying to tell us under these vesicles? It's written that, ah, uh, vesicle. It's a fluid, fluid filled, less than zero point five uh, centimeters, and it's also written that we have a bullet, right? And this is fluid filled, more than zero point five centimeters. So let us understand the first thing that is a vesicle. So if you look at this, this is how the vesicle looks. You can look at this; it's a fluid filled, right? Fluid filled, but it is less than zero point five centimeters. So this is a vesicle, right? And the next thing is, uh, what is that? It is bulla, and what are those? So these are fluid filled, and now this is more than zero point five. what are the more than 0.5 cm so let us look at this so this is a bulla right if it is more than 0.5 cm and we call it as bulla so that's all we have to understand it's a fluid filled right and it is more than 0.5 cm so whenever we speak about the bulla then you have to think about it is more than 0.5 cm 0.5 cm and it is fluid filled and if you look at the next point we have what is that pistil what is that pistil this is pus filled and less than or equal to 0.5 cm and we have something known as abscess pus filled more than 0.5 cm so let us look at this regarding the pistil this is how the pistil looks right it's a pus filled you can look at this these are the pus filled and these are less than 0.5 cm the small so we call it as pistil right so whenever we use the word pistil that means there is a pus filled but the pus filled it is less than 0.5 cm so that's all we have to understand guys regarding this aspect so let's go with the next one the next we have is ab abscess so it's written that pus filled more than 0.5 cm so you can look at this this is abscess and now it is more than 0.5 cm so it's an abscess pus filled more than 0.5 cm so that's all we have to understand regarding this abscess 
that's all we have to understand regarding the twist so let's go with the next one next we have wheel what is this wheel so it's written that it is a transient uh, it's a transient upper intradermal edema it's also written that usually itchy and seen in uteric area right and typically pale in center red in the surroundings so let us understand them guys so if you look at this this is half the wheel looks right this is half we call this as a wheel so let me read once again what's written here let us correlate with this diagram the first thing it's a transient upper intradermal edema uh, what does it mean we know that we have an epidermis we have dermis and this is an upper dermis and this is inner dermis and we have an upper right so we have a transient upper intradermal edema so this upper transient intradermal edema is a wheel and remember that usually it is itchy right usually it is itchy and seen in uteric area right so let us see how the uteric area picture looks so if you observe here this is this half the uteric area looks right so it is seen in this type of wheel is seen in uteric areas and if you observe carefully here right if you observe carefully it is pale in center right it is pale in center and if you look at this it is red in the surround aspects so typically pale center it has got a pale center. you can look at this it has got a pale center so if you look at these aspects here this has got a pale center right and surrounding we have a red one so red halo periphery and the pale center so that's all it's written here regarding this wheel but now let us understand the next points the next uh, terminologies in the dermatology will the will be angioedema so let me read the points written here so it's written that regarding this angioedema it's a deep a dermal a problem it's a subcut or subcuticular cuticular edema usually non itchy lip edema periorbital edema and glottic edema so let us understand them so what do you mean by deep dermis dermal you have an epidermis you got a dermis so now it's affecting the deep dermis right so that is the reason we call it as deep dermis since it is a deep so no itchy here we don't have itchy usually no non itchy and it has a subcuticular edema if you look at this this is a, a child who has an angioedema where he has a lip edema he has a periorbital edema and even has a glottic edema so that's all we have to understand regarding this angioedema so let's go to the next one the next thing is burrow so under this it's written that it's a linear right a linear and it is a wavy this is s shaped tunnel in stratum corneum produced by each mite of sarcoptus pathognomic of scabies site web spaces so let us understand them guys so if you look at this this is uh what this is a burrow right and if you observe the things written here or if you look at this what are those these are a linear right these are linear wavy right these are linear wavy so this is s shaped right this is a s shaped tunnel this is a linear s shaped tunnel remember that this is an s shaped wavy tunnel seen in stratum corneum we know that the layers different layers of epidermis right all that stratum corneum stratum lucidum granulosum spinosum basale and now this s shaped tunnel is seen in stratum corneum remember that this type of s shaped tunnel it is produced by each mite also called sarcoptus so it is caused by sarcoptus or each mite and remember that if you find this type of burrows and this is a pathognomic of scabies so and the most site where you find this type of burrows will be web spaces and what are web spaces web spaces are the spaces present between the fingers so this is a web space so that's all you have to understand guys regarding this points so let's go with the next one the next point written here we have yes we have a comedo right so what do you mean by comedo it is an keratinous plug of pilosebaceous apparatus pilosebaceous we already discussed that we have a hair here right in that we also 
sebaceous gland pours into that. You got a block at this aspect. So let us see there is a keratinous plug of pilosebaceous apparatus. So this is half the comedologues, right? This is how it looks. It's a keratinous plug, right? This is a keratin. You can see the black one. So, so it is a keratinous plug of pilosebaceous apparatus. We call this as comedo. So let's go with the next one. The next will be a loss of epithelium, right? And let me read the points written here. So under this, we have erosion and there is ulcer and there is fissure. So let us understand the points written here under this here. So let us look into the first diagram here. What is erosion? So you can look at this diagram here. This is erosion, right? This is what this is dermis and this becomes epidermis. So you can look at this erosion and what do you mean by erosion? Erosion it's nothing but it is a superficial loss of epidermis. You can look at this. This is the dermis. In the dermis there is a superficial loss. So that's all we have to understand regarding this. So it is a superficial loss of epidermis and that is known as erosion. And remember that if there is a deep loss, right? If there is a deep loss of epidermis and deep loss of epidermis and we call it as uh, what ulcer, right? You have the ulcer and you can also see that you have a bit of a dermis also is lost. So deep part of all this part, right? So that's all we have to understand regarding this loss of epithelium deep, we call it as ulcer, superficial, we call it as erosion, right, erosion, right. And the next point written here, it's written that a deep vertical slit or fissure. So you can look at this, this is erosion, this is ulcer and you can look at this, you have a slit here, right, and this is a deep vertical slit. So that's all it's written here regarding these points guys. So let's go with the next points. So the next point written here, we have a crust, right? We got a crust here. So if you read the, if you look at the points written here, it's written that it's a dried serum and it's a dried serum, dried blood exudates and the pus. If you look at this, this is a dried, right? This is a dried serum dried serum of blood or exudates or pus so all this the dried part of serum the dried blood exudates in the pus and we call this as crust so that's all we have to understand regarding the crust whenever we speak about the word crust it means just think that the dried one so let us look into the next one that is scale so what are these it is a flake of stratum corneum and why we have scale? This is due to abnormal keratinization. You can look at this. This is shows the keratinization. So this is a keratinization, and these are the flakes of stratum corneum, right? State of state of flakes, sorry, flakes of stratum corneum. These are the scales. You can just observe them. It is because of abnormal keratinization. So that's all we have to understand regarding these points. So let's go with the next one. The next we have itching type. So under the itching type, it's written that ex, uh, acute. Under the acute, it is excoriation, that is scratch marks. And it's also written that we have a chronic type, right? So under the chronic type, so it's written that what? There is a skin thick pigment shows normal lines. So let us understand them, guys. So if you look at the same one, regarding this uh, itching so whenever it itches right there can be a uh, what stretch stretch marks so you can see this this is known as excoriation so you can see the part so excoriation is a partial or complete loss of epidermis as a result of scratching so whenever you scratch so there will be a loss of epidermis and the loss of dermis and this is known as excoriation so this excoriation is seen in acute type of itching and if this itching continues and if that go for the long time chronic time then you get a something like this. So this is a chronic type of itching here where if you observe here how does it look the skin is thick the skin is pigmented and you can see this you got a normal lines right we have an lines here and it is an you can look at the marks present here right these are the markings 
and in a whole the thick pigmented the surface markings right it shows an lines and sen attenuated surface markings in a whole we call this as lichen fixation so this is a like like what is that lichen fixation lichen fixation so this is half the lichen fixation looks and this lichen fixation it is a marker of chronic itching so that's all we have to understand regarding the terminologies used in dermatologies in the next session we'll be dealing about the other concepts thank you